What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest on this Victory Monday. I feel like it's only right that we point that out. Now, hey, we're moved on. We're moving on. We're on to Minnesota. And I'm fired up for this Minnesota game because of how much this means. Today's video is being brought to you by BetUS. So use promo code in the description, YouTube150, to get a 150% deposit match on your first deposit, 125% on your next two deposit. We'll talk about that more here in a second. But today, we are back with another potential trade target video. Now, I think at some point, we're probably just going to put together a list. And of course, I could sit here and just mention Max Crosby and Miles Garrett and Hassan Reddick and these big names. But I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, see what I could find kind of under the surface. And I think I found another really interesting option today that we are going to discuss. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to our video. Glad you guys are here. I'm excited to do this video because I do like talking about potential new options for the Lions. But obviously, I have a uh, heavy heart with this one because we're also getting the unfortunate updates on Aiden Hutchison. The good thing is, it sounds like his surgery went really well, which is great. He had immediate surgery. According to the Detroit Lions, he had a fractured tibia and fibula, which does make sense. When watching it live, I wasn't sure what it was, but it does make sense. It seemed like his leg kind of smacked a limb kneel, like flying around, and then it seemed like he kind of gave out on the play, so it makes sense that, that was the injury. Expected to return to the Lions, but there is also no timetable for his return to play at this time, so I don't know that he's going to come back at all this season, but the good thing is successful surgery. That's great to hear, so we'll kind of keep an eye on for any updates there with Aiden Hutchinson. With that being said, let's give a shout-out to BetUS, and I'm going to share on the screen right now the point spread for tonight's game because i think this is incredibly interesting we got a big monday night football game we got bills and jets and currently the spread is bills minus one now i like the bills in this game i'd love to see the jets win i like the jets coming into the season i had them winning the division so it would make sense based on my preseason predictions that hey you probably should take the jets because this feels like a massive swing game but i just don't trust it right now and i don't love that i'm not seeing malachi corley you know that hurts i want to see malachi corley on the field so because we haven't seen that because Devonta adams is not a jet yet i'm gonna roll with the buffalo bills and the fact that it's a one point spread kind of feels like a pick em. i feel really confident in this one taking the bills. so if i were to risk 20 dollars, i could win almost double 17 dollars 39 cents so i'm gonna place that bet on the jets minus one not even gonna mess with the money line on this game i just think the jets will win this game and i think they'll win by more than a point so the bet the bet has been placed again youtube 150 is the promo code check it out now let's get to the video today i wanted to find another name to discuss and one name that kind of came in my mind last night that i thought was interesting was Cameron Jordan from the New Orleans Saints 35 year old defensive end obviously they're struggling this season they're now two and four on the year and you look at the New Orleans Saints weird quarterback situation with the Derek Carr injury and I think that's really possible that they could be looking to move off players to try to acquire some more draft capital and when you look at Cam Jordan who the Lions are familiar with they know his character and obviously that's a leader of that team he's a little bit older right now could be looking for kind of that last spot to land with Cam Jordan I thought was a super interesting name on the surface when you know who he is you know the connection with the Lions you know the way that he could play defensively the versatility that he brings but then when I watched him today and I do need to watch more I just didn't step back feeling like it was enough like he he was he was playing at that kind of level right now where this is like this feels like this is the move for the Lions I think the character obviously checks out financially you could make it make sense and this is a player that I'm sure the Lions have a lot of respect for, so if they made this kind of move, definitely would not be surprised, and I think I do need to watch more of the player, but just at this point, I couldn't get to the spot where I was like, yeah, that's the move the Lions should make. He's playing at that level so far this season. I just didn't get there with Cam Jordan, but I think it's interesting, but the guy that did catch my eye when watching today, and I will point this out, Bleacher Report just posted this, that the Raiders would not entertain multiple ones for Crosby. This feels like a post towards the Detroit Lions, just to kind of throw this out there, that this is some of the early news that we're getting back, or the early feedback on the Max Crosby idea, and a team that is struggling, and he's from the Cleveland Browns, they've now won one game on the season. I know Miles Garrett's the guy that's getting the attention, but man, it would just be crazy to me for the Browns, as bad as they are, to trade away Miles Garrett, and they do have a first round pick that's got coming here. They actually have their first four rounds of picks this season, so I don't really know that they feel like they need to acquire that high of a pick where they would like let's move off miles garrett i just feel like that would be crazy as bad as they are but a guy that could be interesting in moving off of with isaiah mcguire on this team is zadarius smith the guy that plays opposite of miles garrett the guy that knows the nfc well nfc north that is because he played with the packers and then went to the vikings and now he's with the cleveland browns another older potential trade target he's 32 years old he signed a two-year extension with the cleveland browns but if they did want to acquire some draft capital that probably wouldn't take a ton because because when he was moved from Minnesota to the Cleveland Browns, it was for two fifth round picks in exchange for Zadarius Smith, a sixth round pick and a seventh round pick. So maybe a day three pick swap.
swap, something like that. Didn't take a lot to make it happen. Last time, maybe the Lions being a little bit more desperate, maybe it takes a little bit more than I'm expecting, but it's not going to cost a ton for the Lions. And when you look at the financial aspect of it, yes, he already signed that two-year extension, so I don't know that he'd be coming in looking for an immediate extension with the Lions, so I don't know that we'd have to worry about that necessarily. He is under contract for next season, so you have a little bit of kind of room to work here with Zedaria Smith, and according to Over the Cap, the price for the Lions to take on his contract for this season would be $1.2 million, and next season would be just over $4 million in cap space. So financially, it could also make a ton of sense for the Lions. Six foot four, 275 pound defensive end. He may not seem like maybe the best option just by the name alone, but I'll tell you what, from the guys that I went through and watched today, he was one of those guys that feel like he could actually make a real impact now he's not replacing Aiden Hutchinson he's not Aiden Hutchinson but he does play less left defensive end which would step in and fill right to the Aiden Hutchinson role he does have versatility across line of scrimmage can play with his hand in the dirt can play in a stand-up role can move inside and outside can check inside on sub packages so role wise he could help us a little bit there he's also a very durable and reliable player that's played and started at least 16 games for the last five seasons he had a knee injury that popped up in August he's returned from that last season he posted 60 pressures, earning an incredible pass rush grade, according to Pro Football Focus. A more mediocre run defense grade last season, however. Not playing at that level, but according to Pro Football Focus, is already 66.4 grade in pass rush, 64.6 grade against the run this season. He has 10 total pressures on the season, as well as 3 sacks so far this year with 8 run stops. And when I watch Zedari Smith, again, he's not the Aiden Hutchinson level player, but this is a pretty well-rounded piece that is an effective pass rusher that can definitely win with power. He's more of a power rusher on the edge that just seems like he'd also make a ton of sense as a scheme fit to this defense so let's start with the things that I liked when watching Zedarius Smith first off first off as a taller defense fan he definitely gets off the ball really well he gets off the ball low what I like is he plays with good reactive timing in his first snap so he usually gets a really good jump on the snap now that being said he doesn't bring a ton of like burst or acceleration off the line that's extremely threatening not to the Aiden Hutchinson level whatsoever but he does play with good reactiveness on the off the line that he gets off the ball well and plays with really good early positioning specifically against the run which helps a ton now he does have some discipline issues that I've noticed against the run specifically when teams put him in kind of the zone read option make him decide between quarterback and running back you can get real inconsistencies there at times he'll fall behind gaps trying to kind of play over gaps and he'll fall into trouble where he doesn't get into the spot that he needs to get on to get into early enough when they kind of slant rush he does have the lateral agility to work over blocks so he can go from the C gap work over a block into the B gap and make a play on a ball carrier he just sometimes doesn't get into the right gap immediately on the play and he can fall behind so there is some hit and miss I think in terms of discipline there but I love his body positioning early I don't always love his hand usage early his initial hands to set an edge but I love the way that he positions himself I love the way that he plays low off the low off the ball a brick wall like this guy is very powerful at the point of attack really heavy hands at the point of attack which makes him impactful against the run and you tie that together with the fact that he plays with really nice pursuit I've seen a good motor in Zedaria Smith from what I've seen he plays about 30 to 40 snaps a game so he'd be a little bit rotational probably here as well but he plays with a good motor when he's out there and he has a really nice pursuit to the football as a pass rusher and a run defender that's found making a lot of plays late in the play but he also plays with really good tracking ability a really good nose for the football especially as a pass rusher where he always seems to kind of end up just around the football has a really good path to the quarterback as a pass rusher from point a to point b and like i said he just got that nose that really good tracking ability and really good feel for where the ball is on the play so plays with really nice core strength as well as ankle bend which kind of opens up some slither opportunity but specifically it makes him more nimble than anything it brings really nice contact balance as a pass rusher it allows him to string pass rush moves together work into counters without losing balance you'll see cut blocks that he's able to stay on his feet he doesn't really find himself on the ground that often which is really a good sign for a bigger defensive end so I like some of the nimbleness that he brings with some of that ankle strength and some of that ankle lean as a pass rusher with helps him transition as I sped the spin counter counter pass rush moves is a really nice strung together well thought out pass rush ability that he brings to the table he's got some variety in his pass rush as well which to me is mainly set up by the footwork as a pass rusher he strings it really well together with his hands you see a play like this against Lane Johnson. Look at the discipline upfield before sticking and crossing the face of the right tackle. Now, you do see a little bit of stiffness in the core there and a little bit of lack of dip to kind of finish on a play like this, but he does get pressure and he does collapse. The One pocket. of the pass rush moves that he loves to get to is kind of that skip club move that's very fluid and sound, as well as the spin counter off of the initial attack as a pass rusher. So he's able to keep working on plays. Very powerful, as I said, in the upper body. You'll see that with the really heavy hands at that initial point of attack, which can help set an edge 
but also as a pass rusher can really set the tone as a pass rusher and help him create distance and allow him to work off his initial pass rush move like he's very smooth in his transition from speed to power into bull rush opportunities to create speed to power opportunities and work up field as a pass rusher to win outside win on the outside shoulder of an offensive lineman but also get inside wins early on the play and I think a lot of that comes back to that just experience that he has where you'll see nice reactiveness off the ball in terms of timing but he also ties that together with really good reactiveness to the offensive lineman set you get a jump set you get quick wins inside you get a lot of quick swim reactiveness to that so he has variety one problem that he has with that for me from what I've seen is that too often offensive tackles and even tight ends can kind of hang around on blocks even if he does get an edge it's being able to kind of finish off some of those reps to me he kind of gets hung on a little bit it's probably why his sacks are a little bit lower as well because even if he can create a pressure doesn't always finish the play because even if he has that really nice like reactive swim move he doesn't seemingly bring some of that flexibility in the torso to kind of just make guys completely whiff he also loses some burst and speed around the edge to really dip the corner and turn the corner and turn pressures into making a play on the quarterback consistently what he does bring is really good length which again is very beneficial against the run you'll see him get his hands in a lot of passing windows very reactive in those spots and he also has a nice little mean streak about him as a pass rusher like he's got a he's got an edge to him and you could feel it right he'll get into it after plays it's not terrible where he's getting flagged left and right but he's feisty he's feisty that plays a little bit an edge you can kind of see that motor build up as game goes on he also opens up a lot of flexibility as a stunt rusher he can crash inside well brings a lot of power at the point of attack in those inside stunt rushing to nice lateral burst off the line immediately he gets down the line of scrimmage laterally pretty well and like i said you'll see that against like zone runs or when he's working on the back side of plays but you also see it as a pass rusher that lateral burst immediately off the line of scrimmage to be able to jump inside and slant into gaps he does bring a nice lateral burst to his game with some really nice agility for a bigger defensive end kind of the speed around the edge the initial hands at the point of attack can be a little bit inconsistent to me especially at setting the edge his bull rush can tend to get a little bit upright and he can kind of lose leverage throughout the rep where the walk back isn't always sustained it can kind of die out because he can kind of quickly lose leverage at times as a pass rusher he feels a little bit stiff in certain reps as well but overall to me this is a well-rounded edge rusher that's not going to bring what Aiden Hutchinson brought to the table but he is a very capable starter he is an upgrade I think over some of the pieces that we have now he's not a complete opposite like Josh Uche was where it's like hey you kind of get some of that James Houston ability where it's like this is different than Levi and Pascal he's not an exact opposite in that spot but the Lions tend to kind of like to lean more towards pocket pushers and pocket collapsers he would fit into that really well like I said he plays the same role as hey Hutchinson most of the time as a left side defensive end working on the opposing right tackle but he brings flexibility to the table I think he'd be a really nice addition that wouldn't cost a ton financially it makes sense probably wouldn't be looking for an immediate new deal because he already got a new deal in the offseason but it can allow the Lions to keep getting reps in the interior for Levi and Wingo but also can open up kind of that you know back and forth between Levi plays defensive ends and Darius plays some defensive end for us again I love the fact that he's reliable he could play late into the season I think Darius Smith is a really interesting option as much talk as it's going to be about Miles Garrett and like I said I'm not opposed to any of that kind of talk but I just think that this could be a more realistic option where they don't want to completely sell off their best player and instead maybe it's a guy like Zedaria Smith who's the veteran as right now where it's kind of a disaster for the Browns they look to just get some picks in exchange and I think the Lions maybe be more willing to pay this kind of price where they wouldn't have to give out an immediate extension my assumption there so I think Zedaria Smith it's an interesting option keep an eye on that name I'll come back with more names if you have any throw them down in the comments below especially if they're outside the box I love the names that we hear Max Crosby it's amazing I'm on board with it but if you got some outside the box options man throw it down in the comments below I'm always looking for different names and I'm gonna leave it there man shout out to bet us thank you for sponsoring today's video and thank you pride for watching and I'm out